Robert, I want to hone in on this issue because I think this is really important for people to understand. The What, what you're telling me, tell me if I've got this right because I'm not a lawyer, but essentially you're saying that is if this case succeeds against Donald Trump, the law will no longer emanate from the president uh, in terms of how documents are classified, but rather he will be controlled by this broader bureaucracy. Now, how would a future president, Democrat or Republican, say, be able to negotiate, talk to a foreign leader, whether they're friendly or an enemy, and negotiate with them and talk to them and deal with them if they have potentially this bureaucracy of agencies and national security types telling them this is okay, this isn't? Effectively, this indictment tries to make the president the agent of the bureaucracy rather than the executive in control of the bureaucracy. And what it would do is, in the example you give, it would make the president have to get their permission first before he did any set of policies, before he announced any information, before he discussed or engaged in certain diplomatic engagements around the globe. He wouldn't be allowed to talk to the Russians to negotiate a peace deal in Ukraine. He wouldn't be allowed to talk to China to negotiate issues with North Korea or with Taiwan. He wouldn't so, be allowed to talk to Israel about Palestine without their permission first. So, Robert, then what that would mean, essentially, is that you could have a president come in on a on a ticket of saying, we're going to do this with foreign policy, we're going to make America this way or that way or the other thing with foreign policy, diplomacy, trade, all of these issues. But still, I mean, this would be kind of almost a deep state coup, not to be conspiratorial about it. Well, that's exactly what it would be. I mean, the deep state original is a doctrine originated by a publisher at The Economist, and it just means what happens when you have an unelected bureaucracy that has administrative power over law enforcement and national security. He, you know, it got termed a deep state because of how deeply entrenched it is and because of how powerful that can be. If they could, I mean, we, and we have that problem in the United States. People like Jesus Engleton was running around blackmailing members of Congress. Uh, I mean, so it, when he was part of the CIA to it broaden their budgets and expand their power. So we're back to that all over again with we have aspects of the intelligence community that thinks the, they should run American foreign policy and the American people should not be bothered with it. The American people shouldn't get to determine that. Their elected president shouldn't get to dictate that, that they are the experts and they should run the show and the president should just be their spokesperson. And if he ever challenges them, he goes to prison. That's well, the meaning of this indictment. And, and, and when they're using the Espionage Act, which is a bit of a hangover from World War I, the language in the Espionage Act is very clear that it is about doing anything that goes against, and I think the exact words are, the interests of the United States of America. So if these guys, you know, the bureaucrats, the prosecutors, whomever, see Donald Trump being president as being against the interests of the United States of America, they will essentially stop at nothing, what you're saying, uh, to stop him from being president again. That's exactly what's going on. I mean, they're basically saying, because you challenged us, we're going to try to put you in prison for 400 years, and we're going to try to make sure you're never president again, just like they handicapped his presidency with, as we now know from the Durham report, a bogus Russiagate investigation and smear campaign that mm. might have prevented, had Trump had free reign, maybe we don't have this war with Ukraine. Maybe he would have found out a solution so this war doesn't exist. So these are real world consequences to the perilous precedents. People think that's about Trump. It's really about the power of the American people to control their own executive branch. And finally, Robert, I can't let you go without asking you about the latest news out of the corruption cases uh, that are brewing under the surface around the Bidens. Latest is that there was alleged coercion of a foreign national connected with Ukrainian energy firm Burisma to pay $10 million in bribes, according to individuals familiar with the investigation into the FBI's handling of the confidential human source report they have on that. What's the latest? And Given everything we've just talked about, is this going to continue to be squelched because there's another agenda? I mean, I think I, I think it will continue, sadly, to be squelched. Uh, but it does raise major questions about what we're doing right now in Ukraine in certain respects, because Ukraine keeps coming back to the centerpiece of the bribery allegations concerning uh, Joe Biden and his son and other family members. And there's apparently, according to Senator Grassley, 17 tapes that record these conversations that even include 
uh, then Vice President Biden being recorded on these tapes. It would fit the modus operandi. I mean, during the Ukrainian this Ukrainian time frame, you had a lot of oligarchs that got a lot of their uh, riches from government connections, from questionable banks. Uh, that was what uh, Biden was put in charge of running after what some people call the Maidan coup, other people call the Maidan revolution. However you term it, there was a lot of free reign going on, a lot of investigations that got shut down. And after Biden gets involved, the Burisma investigation gets shut down, billions at stake in, in various forms of fraud. So $10 million bribe sounds almost reasonable, sadly. Mm. So uh, it's very believable and credible that this occurred, given the history of Biden, given what we know about what was happening in Ukraine at the time, given the independent verification from third-party whistleblowers and apparently authenticated tapes, according to Senator Grassley, who hasn't well, been known to just you know spout anything. So it looks well, like we have systemic corruption with the Biden administration. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that, but this is going to be one to run that we're going to have to keep a very close eye on. Robert Barnes, thank you so much for your time.